Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome to Charles Cook. Charles. Charles reads a book. No. I don't know why this is always the hardest thing for me, but it's something with me. I'm Charles, and I like to I like to ride bikes. So biking with no, no, that's not it. Some I cook. Cooking with Charles. Yes. Hey Charles, what's cooking? Always tastes good when you're cooking with Charles. I gotta say, I love that jingle. I hope you do too. It's number one on the pop charts right now, which is pretty unbelievable. At least I tell myself that. Anyway, today we are making my favorite food in the world. And no, it's not Rice Krispie Treats. It's pizza. Pizza is my absolute all-time favorite food in the world. Fun fact, I don't like cheese. I know it's weird. Whoa, everybody's throwing stuff at me. I just don't like cheese unless it's on pizza. I like mozzarella on pizza, provolone on pizza, parmesan on pizza. But... Today, I'm eating cheese because I'm eating my favorite food, which is... No, not Rice Krispie Treats. Pizza! Hey Charles, what's cooking? Always tastes good when you're cooking with Charles. Thank you, yes. And that brings me to our, uh, our subject today. We are going to start having some frozen, ready-to-eat pizza kits at... Our restaurant here at Harvest Table Restaurant in Middleview, Virginia, and at Blue Hills Market in Abingdon, Virginia. Now, these will be basic take-and-bake recipes. So, they'll be already packaged with cheese and or cheese and pepperoni. And all you got to do is take it home, put it in the oven for about 20 minutes, and you have a nice, wonderful, freshly made, locally sourced ingredients pizza. So, without further ado, we need to learn how to make dough. Not that kind of dough, but pizza dough. So, you all remember him from last week. It's Mr. Willie Borgwine. Willie, come on over here and show us how to make some pizza dough. He was, he, he was just right there. You remember from the last video, he was snuck up. Oh, there you are. Look up on hey, me. Don't scare me. Oh! Willie, come on, man. Let's do this. I got, I got pizza. Oh! Okay, Willie, everybody. Willie Borgwine. Stage right, stage left, whatever, we're here. We're here. So first we're going to make the dough. Um, when you get your kit, you're not going to have to do any of that. But I want you to know how to do it so when you get home and you really like what we do, you'll see that, again, this is a bunch of stuff you might already have in your pantry. The yeast might not be there, but you know what? It's really easy to find. It's a really easy recipe. If you'll come over to my baking table, I'll show you how to start, and we'll get us some pizzas real quick here. Okay. So, one of your best friends in the kitchen, and if you don't have one, and you have a Christmas list, put it on it. It's your KitchenAid. Um, any mixer will work, but your hands work as well, and a bowl with a spoon. I'm going to show you how to do this, but I'll sh tell you how to go forward after that, especially for those without a mixer. I didn't really measure out a cup of water to show you a cup of water. There's a cup of water in here. And also, a tablespoon of active dry yeast. This is available in small packets at your grocery store. <clears throat> You can also get something called instant yeast. Both will work, or I should say either, um, but the active dry is what I've done. With that, you want to put it in your lukewarm water. If you're running water out of your faucet and it's so hot that you want to take a bath in it, it's too hot. Um, about 110, 120, that's like yeast gets so excited that it lives its whole life and it's done. So if it's not cold and it's not hot, put a cup of water in. Put a tablespoon of yeast and a tablespoon of sugar. After about 10 minutes, you'll get sort of a no more chunks in it kind of scenario. It's just a brownish water. That's your yeast bloomed. Um, once your yeast is bloomed, you're ready to rock. And any time that you've already got your yeast in there, throw your tablespoon of oil in there as well. Um, I'm using olive oil. Vegetable oil will work. Olive oil just gives it a little more flavor. Um, those will all work together. If you put your oil in your water before you put your yeast, then you have yeast floating on top of oil. Don't do that. Oil lasts, and as a super last ingredient, is your teaspoon of salt. So, pizza dough, very simple. Yeast, water, oil, all ready to go. And I'm gonna take my mixer and just add in my two cups of flour. This is gonna make about two large pizzas. Um, 
I guess that kind of depends on what you define as large. But we're going to serve about three to four people with each pizza. So um, two to three slices. If you've got kids, you can definitely serve four. Um, two cups of flour. Salt goes in last because if salt hits yeast, yeast starts to go on vacation and doesn't really care about making pizza dough anymore. So all in there, turn on your mixer. If you have this in your house and you want to use it, that's great. You can leave this going for about three to four minutes and you don't have any work to do yourself. If you're feeling aggressive, if you're feeling like I don't have a mixer and I just have a spoon, once your dough ball comes together, you're just going to throw it on a table and just a tiny bit of flour will help you out. You don't need much. It's supposed to be a little bit of a sticky dough. So, you know, you've always heard to have fun, you need to make a mess. You're going to have a lot of fun with pizza. So, we're taking this all out of the process for you, so it'll be a lot easier. But I would encourage you to try this. It's something your kids can really get into as well. They're really cooking when they're getting their hands in dough. And just real quickly, I can show you, just with that amount of mixing, I've got a dough with two cups of flour that's even sticking to my gloves. My hands would be a total wreck at this point. If I want to, I can put more flour in my mixing bowl and make that work. Or, since I'm going to want to knead it anyway, I'm going to just use some of my extra half cup of flour on my board, and I'm going to start kneading. Kneading as a process is, again, a great way to get rid of stress. It's also a way to get acquainted with your food products because we often just break these out of seals and throw them in the oven. We don't know where they come from. If you can touch it and you can feel that, oh, it just got less sticky. Oh, it's really soft now. It's really smooth. I might do some ASMR videos of this. The feel is great. You can see already I've got a nice dough, but when I pull it, it does this. You're going to want to knead it until when you pull it as far as you can. It really comes to a point where you can see almost through it. That's called the window. You want to work to the window. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to switch back to Charles for just a sec, because he wants to tell you about our other ingredients that are going, going to go on this pizza. All local, all wonderful. Thanks, Willie. Welcome back. Hey, yeah, so we got to see some, some really cool and awesome pizza dough making uh, skills from Mr. Willie Bordman. Thank you, Willie. Uh, yeah, he said something about uh, all the local ingredients that we use. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to feature that. First off, I'm going to say first and foremost, actually, is the mozzarella cheese. Now, this is goat cheese mozzarella. Now, it's, I know people might get a little scared when they hear goat. But it's not different. Like, it still is mozzarella. It tastes like mozzarella. It's just a little bit more rich, if anything. So this is from Ziegenwald Dairy. It's a dairy farm out of Gate City, Virginia. If you do not know who these people are, look them up on Facebook, website, go to Blue Hills Market, come to our restaurant. It is incredible. Their products are so, so delicious. So big shout out to Ziegenwald Dairy Farm. Thank you. For this particular frozen pizza, it's just going to be a cheese and pepperoni pizza. So where locally can we get pepperoni? Ah, this beautiful pepperoni is a hard salami type pepperoni that we get from Cheshire, Cheshire Pork Farms out of Seven Springs, North Carolina. It is so, so flavorful. You have honestly not had pepperoni until you've tried theirs. So that's where we get our pepperoni from. Last, but certainly not least, or at least I like to think it's not, is our pizza sauce. This nice, beautiful bowl of bread. This, we do not get from somewhere, because I make it in-house. And I'm not going to give you my recipe just yet. I'm going to take a little bit more of this for that. You know what I mean? But I will say that I use nothing but local heirloom tomatoes and some San Marzano tomatoes. And those tomatoes I get from either Harvest... Table Farms here in Meadowview, or Highlands Farms out of Lebanon, Virginia. And then some herbs and spices, pureed up, and that is my wonderful red sauce. Okay? So that's our locally sourced ingredients. That's everything we're going to use for this wonderfully tasty pepperoni pizza.
So what do we do with the crust, Willie? Upon kneading the dough for about five minutes, you'll notice it get a nice smooth surface on it. Uh, again, you'll want that window so you can hold it up to the light, pull it as hard as you can, and just before it breaks, it stays and you can see the vision through it. That's the vision of wonderful pizza. When it gets that way, have a bowl ready. Have your bowl, a little oil in the bottom, throw your dough ball in there. Again, we're going to make two pizzas out of this dough ball with those two, two and a half-ish cups of flour. And let her sit on your counter for about half an hour. Um, it will grow. You're not making a bread loaf, so you don't need it to double or anything like that. Half hour is good. Then, I've got my trusty ball here that's already aged for a half hour. And then there's a little extra, too. Because if you take that dough ball and throw it in the fridge, as long as you want, and I say that meaning under a week, but for a day or two is fine, but put it in there at lunchtime and you're ready to go to dinner. Then you'll have this lovely dough ball, and see how smooth it is? You'll divide yours into two, because again, it's a little bit more than what I've got proofed up here. Get your fists under it. Your fingers are not your friend at this point. Fingers poke holes. Fists make things bigger. So, we'll go around the edges. And again, it's all one piece. So, we want to make sure we're stretching all parts. You don't want to just stretch the crust or the edge where it's going to be your crust. Because then you'll have a great big thick middle to your pizza. So start in your middle. Jimmy. Run around it. Jimmy again. And you just keep doing this until, here's my pan. I'm going to want it to fit that pan. I don't want to have all the fun. Charles enjoys this, so I'm going to pass off the dough. Oh, well, yeah. thank you, Willie. Most of you all probably don't know this, but I am a highly trained pizza dough tosser. It's a thing. So I'm going to show you some of my skills right now. Guys, just so you know, I'm not taking any reservations to do autograph signings or anything because I'm doing this, so please, just in advance, no, but thank you. Yeah, so like Willie said, make little fists underneath there. You want your knuckles to be underneath when you're kneading the dough from underneath. And just keep changing sides, keep going back and forth, and eventually you're going to go with a clockwise motion, pushing it upwards with your knuckles, okay? And then when it comes back down, you want to catch with your knuckles, that way your fingers don't just pierce through the dough. I'm not saying that would normally happen, and I would not know that that would normally happen because I've never done anything like that. I've done it a lot, I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay, lost my dough. Basically, we're just going to toss it straight up. You ready? Here we go. Okay. Lost my dough. You should end up with dough that looks like this, and oh no, a finger went through it. Guess what you've got to fix that? The whole freaking pan full of dough. All better. So now that we've got it stretched out, something we're going to do for you that you might never think to do on your own, is something called docking. That's what this really cool little tool is for that no one has in their kitchen. Um, what works well in place of something so awesome is a fork. So you're just gonna go on your middle. And again, you're not gonna hurt anything. This dough is almost indestructible. So really tell me and us, what is this for? Why are we doing this? Well, this piece of crust doesn't know it's a lo not a loaf of bread. Um, which you want to raise all the way through and make a nice big fluffy ball. That's what you would end up with a pizza crust if you did not dock it or poke holes in it. To let that yeast breath out. The yeast is always living, it's blooming, it's breathing, and that's what makes fluffy edges. You want fluffy edges, so we didn't do that. But we did the middle. Okay. So there you go. It's not going to let any of your sauce out. Okay, good. It's gonna I, be I was worried. It's going to be a lie. So... Here's where a little bit in the break, a break in the process occurs. At the Harvest Table restaurant, what we're going to do at this point is sauce it, cheese it, pepperoni it. You're going to eat in five minutes. If you're taking this home, though, 
you're going to get this halfway baked. So you're going to get it halfway out of our brick oven. I'm going to take it there right now and half bake it. Here we are, hot, hot, hot oven. What you're going to want for your bake at home is about 350, 375 is fine. Depends on how brown you like your crust. 375, nice crispy crust. But I'm going to throw it into our 500 degree brick oven for five minutes. After five minutes, this is what you get. Nice puffy around the edges. Good stuff at the end. Dip it in the sauce that you got on the side. But in the middle, you're ready to top it. So we'll go back to Charles and get some of those good ingredients to put on here. Thanks, Willie. Welcome back. One thing that Mr. Willie over here, the really fancy baker, didn't tell you all oh, is that this docker also works as a massager. And it's pretty good. It's also a medieval torture device, you know. There is that. Either way, to a fair. it's multi-purpose. So, yeah, you have this beautiful par-baked crust. I want to eat it just now, but I know good things come to those who wait. Before I dress this with our toppings, I do have to give a special shout-out to our sponsor for this week's video. Bubble wrap. It protects things. But it makes that really cool popping noise. Squeeze it. So good. So good. Bubble wrap. Alright, so now we have this beautiful par baked homemade pizza crust. Looks amazing, Willie. Really. Good job. It's been docked. I can see there's no visible hole straight down in the pan, so I'm not too worried about putting my sauce on here. So let's do that. I'm going to put probably about three tablespoons of my wonderful homemade locally sourced tomato sauce and just circularly with a spoon work my way outward. Pretty easy. I'm painting the crust. Now, of course, you don't want to go all the way to the edge because you want that nice fluffy pillow for something to hold on to when you're biting your crust without getting the sauce all over your hands and mouth and face and shirt and legs and toes. But that's just me. Okay. So now that we've got this sauced, next we're going to use this beautiful, beautiful Ziegenwald goat cheese mozzarella. Now, I always like when I'm making pizzas, the less is more approach. You know, I thought that with your sauce. That seems like not much sauce. Three tablespoons for three or four people, but... Yeah, that's just the way I like to think. Now, if you have quality crust or dough, I want to taste that. It shouldn't be uh, masked by all that sugary tomato stuff that you get in the store. So, we're just going to complement your crust with some fresh tomato sauce. Same thing with the cheese. Balance. Balance. That's Balance. a good word to use for this, yeah. We want to be able to taste everything. So. Not the time for anti disestablishmentarianism. That's another video. Okay. Stay tuned. It's a good word to use. Okay. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it looks like when it's just. The par-baked crust, the sauce, the cheese. But wait, there's more. If you act now, we're going to have some of this good Cheshire pork pepperoni. How many payments? Only two easy payments. Uh, $49.95. Oh my god. But if you act now, you'll get four of these, and you only pay extra shipping and handling. That's cheaper than grooming my dog ten times. I wouldn't know. I'm not done that yet. Oh. So ladies and gentlemen, it's not rocket science, it's pizza. That is what our pepperoni pizza looks like before we go into the oven. And now, like Willie was saying, this is a little bit different than what we serve at the restaurant. At the restaurant, this is all one thing. We, we build the dough, we put, we put the ingredients on it, we put it in the oven, and you have it like six minutes, five to six minutes later, because we have a 600 degree pizza oven, which rocks. But for you at home, you're getting this and it's frozen. The, the, the crust has already been part cooked. We've got the toppings on there for you. So you're going to take it out of the packaging, put it on a pan, or not, and then put it in your oven at about 400 degrees for around 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how brown you want your cheese. So that's the point we're at right now. So we're taking this beautiful pie, putting it in our preheated oven, 
and it's going to go for about 15 to 20 minutes, and you're going to see the results. Stay tuned. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here it is. Here is our homemade pizza kit, take and bake, whatever you want to call it. But we sincerely thank everyone for watching our videos, for getting our meal kits. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button right down there below so that you can always stay tuned when we have these really fun videos. Make sure you give us a call here at the restaurant in Harvest Table in Meadowview, Virginia, or at Blue Hills Market. Um, we'll see you then. Hi, y'all. We're going to eat.